which again routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 transitions to internal power. At liftoff, it will retract in order to clear the way for Falcon 9's ascent. Those clamp arms are just at the base of the fairing, and we should start to see them open up in about 20 seconds. There you can see the clamp arms are opening in preparation for the initial strong rack retract. Now that those clamp arms are fully opened, and you've got that great view of the TE pulling away from Falcon 9. Right now, the first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged, which is what allows that retraction that we just saw. At T minus zero, the ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off and clears the launch pad. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other. The first stage will finish up at T minus three minutes and the second stage at T minus two. Now those white clouds that you see around the vehicle are formed as the chilled gas above the LOX tank vents overboard to maintain pressure as needed. When the gas comes out into the warmer California air, there we heard that LOX load is complete on the first stage. And again, when that LOX comes out into the warmer California air, it condenses the water in the air and forms those beautiful clouds that you can see around Falcon 9. We are just over 30 seconds away from completion of LOX loading on stage two. And at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will enter startup mode. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown. Just inside of T minus two seconds, we will light the Merlin 1G engines for liftoff. Stage two, lock load complete. There we hear it, that stage two lock load is complete. All 25 payloads continue to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on board the rocket. That venting, venting that you see again is totally normal as we vent the TE lock line ahead of liftoff. And as a reminder, at the request of some of our customers, we won't be showing any views of our payloads today. Live coverage will end after first stage landing and a successful shutdown of our MVAC engine's first burn. Okay, now it's in startup. There's confirmation that F9 is in startup mode. The internal flight computers have taken over the countdown and stage one and stage two have begun pressurizing for launch. LD is go for launch. With that call out from our launch director, we know that we are go for launch. At just under T minus 40 seconds, all systems of Falcon 9 are ready for liftoff with our 25 rideshare payloads on. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And go 3 of 425, go SpaceX.
vehicles pitching down range. It is a beautiful day for launch and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base with payloads for six of our rideshare customers on board. Korea, Space BD, Citael, Deorbit, York Space Systems, and Planet IQ. Now during ascent, we tilt the engines. The technical term for this is gimbling and that turns the rocket horizontally oh, in what we call a gravity turn. We're still going up, but now we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. Max Q. There's the call out from Max Q. So moments ago, we throttled engines down in preparation power for and Max Q. Nominal. Good call outs there that power and telemetry are nominal on board Falcon 9. Max Q is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Now, the rocket typically needs to go around 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and reach orbit, which is why we perform that gravity turn. You can track our progress to orbit by keeping an eye on the stage one telemetry in the bottom corner of your screen. Now we have six events coming up in quick succession. MECO, stage SEP, S1 flip, SES1, boost back burn, start, and fairing separation. During main engine cutoff, we'll shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines, which is followed by stage separation. Nominal trajectory. Nominal trajectory on board Falcon 9. Once separated from the second stage, the booster will flip its orientation and begin heading back to Earth with a short boost back burn, while simultaneously the second stage MVAC engine will ignite for the first time, followed quickly by fairing separation. Here you go. Stage separation confirmed. Confirmation of Miko and stage sep. And back ignition. Good call outs that we've had SES1. And boost one. back startup. And boost back burn startup. Fairing separation confirmed. So we've heard those call outs for those six events that happened back to back and got great views of several of them. That was Miko stage step, S1 flip, SES1, boost back burn start and fairing separation. We will be attempting to retrieve those fairing halves again today once they fall back to earth using our recovery vessel, Go Beyond. Next up, we're listening to hear that we've completed our boost back burn. Stage one boost back shutdown. Right on schedule. We are just about T plus three minutes and 28 seconds into today's mission. And the next critical milestone we're tracking is T plus six minutes and 42 seconds, when we expect to have some great views of the first stage's entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight three of the M1D Both vehicles engines. vehicles remain on a nominal trajectory. There we hear that Falcon 9 remains on a nominal trajectory. For the entry burn, first we will relight the center E9 engine, followed shortly after by E1 and E5, which slows down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. Great views on your screen right now of stage one and those grid fins as the booster heads back to Earth. We relight those engines to slow down and reduce re-entry forces, which ultimately helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also called the rocket's plume. And this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface, which is why our flight proven vehicles tend to look so toasty. That soot comes from the carbon based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. Now, as a quick reminder, at the request of some of our customers, we won't be showing any views of our payloads today. Live coverage will end after the first stage landing and successful shutdown of MVAC's first burn. Just about a minute and a half until we expect to hear the call out that that entry burn has begun.
Those grid fins on your screen are the primary mechanical mechanism that we use to steer the booster on its way back to Earth. Interestingly, even though they look quite small next to Falcon 9, they are about four by five feet, so about as large as a coffee table. Of course, we reuse our boosters and fairings here at SpaceX because reusability is a key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. Again, the Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission is about to perform this entry burn for the 17th time. Great views of the coast of California beginning to come onto your screen now. Stage one entry burn. Confirmation of entry burn startup. On your screen right now, you have two views of our first stage, one from our onboard camera on the left, and on the right-hand side, you can watch that landing as we come back toward landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Stage one entry burn shutdown. Stage Confirmation one of entry FTF burn end. Faced. The Merlins on board the first stage are optimized for sea level. These achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust during both ascent and descent, while the MVAC engine is optimized to operate in space, no, producing 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Coming up next, we'll shut down our MVAC engine on the second stage, followed quickly by our landing burn on the first stage. And as a reminder, we are targeting a land landing at landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base today, which is just west of our launch pad. Stage, stage one transonic. Stage two FTS has saved. Beautiful stage views there. Stage one landing burn. And confirmation that we have begun our landing burn. We're now waiting for Falcon to land back at landing zone four. Stage one landing leg deploy. And there you have it. Stage that one marks landing SpaceX's confirmed. 250th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. While the mission isn't over just yet, as a reminder, we won't be showing any second stage views today, and therefore we're going to end our coverage here. All of us at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customers, including Korea, Space BD, CTIL, Deorbit, York Space Systems, and Planet IQ for entrusting us with today's mission. For those of you interested in learning more about today's payloads and deployments, please head over to our customers' websites for more information. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's launch. Thanks to all our viewers for tuning in and for your continued support. We'll see you again soon.